Good day and welcome to our combined Ash Wednesday service of worship. Ash Wednesday is the day which announces, we could say in the Christian tradition, the time of Lent, a 40-day period before Easter. And during this period, we think of Jesus Christ, of his suffering. And therefore, in many Christian traditions, some Christians are giving up some of the privileges of everyday life. For instance, giving up sweets instead of grabbing a sweet, sit down and pray. Or maybe just driving easily around, take a walk and pray. So in giving up something, we think of Jesus Christ giving up his life for us and loving us. And therefore, on Ash Wednesday, it's usually tr the tradition to take palm branches from the previous year's Palm Sunday and burn those ashes and the minister or the priest or the pastor, in whichever tradition, we take some of those ashes and put it on the forehead of congregation members, saying the words, from dust you came and to dust you'll return. In this meaning that our whole being, our whole life, is in God's hands and therefore I invite you to this worship service of today where infants still being fed can worship God and grandparents old aged are welcomed in the presence of God those who walk with their faults and the mistakes on their sleeves and those who is heartbroken and carries the struggles of life inside. All are welcome in God's presence. As I say, usually Christians tend to invite God into our presence, but it's the other way around. We are in the presence of God. And therefore, I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we realize that you gather all your people in different places and in different spaces. And we are present in your presence. Thank you for your love. And thank you for a time like Lent where we journey with you, thinking of what you've done for us. Jesus Christ giving your life. And therefore you call us to repent during these days. Thinking of our own lives, of our own ways. Of being part of a relationship with you. And Lord, within this, we commemorate and we celebrate. That we may know and remember that the power of sin and death are forever ended. On the cross. Lord, and that your love is not only for a day, but for eternity. Christ, that you poured out your blood for us, deep wounds of love suffered for us. And therefore, on Ash Wednesday, may we remember the ashes on our foreheads and kneel before you, the one whose love knows no end, with humble hearts and repented spirits, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to guide us so that we may remember and give thanks to you every day of our life. Lord, may we remember we are but dust and walk together into the unknowns of tomorrow, because you are already there. You help us to break the bars of prisons, building bridges, setting captives free, Lord. And therefore, let us take up our cross and follow you, knowing and believing that in you, Jesus Christ, all things work together. And this we pray in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Three in one. Amen. 
you might know the sketch or the story being told about the mom who was baking pancakes for her two kids. Let's call them Callum and Finley. And while she was baking these pancakes, the two boys started quarreling and arguing who should get the first pancake. And the older said, well, uh, I am the one who should get the first pancake, seeing that I am the firstborn. No, said Finley, the, the younger of the two. I should get it because I was standing and waiting here with mom all the time. So the mom sends the opportunity to teach them a moral lesson. And then she turned down the gas for a moment and she said, listen, boys. Now, if Jesus was here, he would say, give me the first pancake. Would he? No. No, he would say, let my brother have the first pancake and I'll have the second one. And then Callum thought about this for quite a while, standing there pondering. And then he said to Finley, well, Finley, then you be Jesus today. Yes, most of the time in our lives, most of us are like Cam Callum. We feel that we are owed the first pancake. Uh, we need it. It's all about us and our world. But during Lent, Lent gives us the season and Lent gives us the chance to be different. A opportunity to go for the second pancake and to find that we're actually much happier in giving than receive, uh, re receiving. What we should give up for Lent is maybe our persistent desire to put ourselves first in life. But that's much easier said than done. I invite you to sing with me the hymn called Ashes to Ashes.
giving up our persistent need to put ourselves first is certainly easier said than done as Ati mentioned to us just a few moments ago. Taking up our cross and following Jesus is more than just a beautiful sentiment however. And the time of Lent is a time for us, an opportunity, an invitation to practice what this means. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus points out how easy it would be to take on some new challenge during Lent, such as giving more money to good causes or fasting regularly, out of pride. Our real motive is not to grow spiritually, but to show off. We still want to get that first pancake. Instead, Jesus wants us to grow inwardly, not drawing attention to ourselves, but serving God in secret. Let us now listen to the words of Jesus spoken to us through the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 to 6 and 16 to 18. I will first read for us from the New International Version and then from the Message Translation. While you listen to these words, ponder on what it might mean for you to become a second pancake person, what it practically would look like for you to serve God in secret. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Matthew 6 verses 1 to 6 and 16 to 18. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the street corners, to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Thinking about these words for a few moments, how can you become a second pancake person? Let us listen now to the same words from the Message Translation. Be especially careful when you are trying to be good, so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theatre, but the God who made you won't be applauding. When you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. You've seen them in action, I'm sure. Play actors, I call them, treating prayer meeting and street corner alike as a stage, acting compassionate as long as someone is watching playing to the crowds. They get applause, true, but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it, quietly and unobtrusively. This is the way your God, who conceived you in love, working behind the scenes, helps you out. And when you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for 15 minutes of fame. 
Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense His grace. When you practice some appetite-denying discipline to better concentrate on God, don't make a production out of it. It might turn you into a small-time celebrity, but it won't make you a saint. If you go into training inwardly, act normally outwardly. Shampoo and comb your hair, brush your teeth and wash your face. God doesn't require some attention-getting devices. He won't overlook what you are doing. He'll reward you. If we can learn to live with less voluntarily and adjust our lives accordingly, discovering in the process we can manage without things we'd always taken for granted, if we can learn, learn to do this voluntarily, we are much more likely to do it when involuntary suffering comes our way, when things we don't want or don't choose happen to us. And then we'll also be more likely to help others do the same. Learning to th give things up in this way, to carry our cross freely, may not only equip us for what lies ahead and help us to grow spiritually, but it may actually make us happier, more fulfilled people. We may find there is far more joy to be found in being second pancake people than in constantly demanding the first one. Let us now join our hearts and minds together as one. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you call us to carry our crosses and to follow in your footsteps, to not think of ourselves more highly than we ought to, and to become second pancake people. Jesus, we confess that too often we forget this. Too often we want what we want, when we want it, and without anyone or anything getting in our way. We confess that our own wants and needs draw our attention away from you and your presence with us. We focus only on ourselves and our own little worlds. Forgive us, dear Lord, for all that has come between us and you for all that draws our attention away from your presence with us, and for everything that causes us to want that first pancake every time. Holy Spirit of God, refresh and renew us now. Guide us in your ways and give us the strength to follow you. This we pray in your holy name, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. We are going to sing our next hymn together, a hymn called I Shall Not Want, perhaps a little less well known. If you do not know the words, feel free to listen to the music and reflect on the words as you hear them.
When I taste of your goodness, when I taste of your goodness, I shall not want. Isn't that just a beautiful song and how appropriate for our time together as well. All this talk about food, however, is making me want a pancake. But we're going to replace that desire by doing something practical together. And it involves the ash cross. The ash cross on a person's forehead is meant to show that that person belongs to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it is also there to represent grief and mourning for sins. The same sins Jesus Christ gave his life for when he died on the cross. And for this specific service, you are to embody both minister and recipient by applying your own cross. How exciting. You will need the following things. And I did a bit of preparation. As you will soon find out. You will need a bit of, of olive oil. Or just normal vegetable oil. Then you will need a small mirror. Um, just to help you apply the cross to your forehead. And then most importantly. 
you will need some ashes and I don't know if you will be able to see there but um, I've already prepared some ashes outside in the weather just some old papers that came through the post box um, just burnt it up be cautious when you do this if you are young make sure that you have an adult present just to supervise and then very simply what you need to do is is just to mix in a bit of the olive oil or the vegetable oil with your ash and then you need to mix it up and make a bit of a paste with it so that we will be able to apply that to our forehead I need a little bit more need I remind you if you are uh, using something from the kitchen uh, make sure that whoever shares the kitchen with you in my case my wife gives a, a stamp of approval you don't want to get into any trouble because of me and so when we have a bit of a paste we'll be able to reply that also to our foreheads and this is such a brilliant tradition that's been running throughout the church for hundreds and hundreds of years and as Ati said usually folks use the palm branches from the previous years as Palm Sunday and that is something that we are going to do just now and so when you have your ash ready you're going to put a bit of it on your finger preparing yourself to apply it make sure that you have your uh, mirror with you as well probably just saw yourself there in the reflection and then when you apply the ash to your forehead you say remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return repent and believe in the gospel the good news of Jesus keep the cross for a period of time and then wash it off as a reminder that you have been cleansed of all your wrongdoings let us now join our hearts in prayer God of compassion through your son Jesus Christ you have reconciled us to yourself as we follow in this example through prayer and fasting may we obey you with willing hearts to serve one another in holy love and so Lord as we enter into this time of Lent may we be reminded of the sacrifice you made for us may the reality of your love spur us on to make our own sacrifices by giving something up and replacing it with praise or better yet getting into the habit of pursuing a discipline such as friendliness or generosity as an outward expression of an inner conviction and belief that we have indeed been forgiven and saved and may our thankful hearts help us to serve others and Lord, though the cross, the ash cross may fade through the day and later be washed off, your grace and mercy for us will never diminish. It is everlasting. For you have washed us clean by the blood of the Lamb. And thank you for this. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been a joy and privilege having you join us. Thank you for your time. Whether you are affiliated with Liberton Northfield Church, Strathbrook Parish Church, Kirk Liston Parish Church, or from anywhere else in Scotland or the world, we thank you for your presence. May you have a blessed Lent and Easter. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to us a clean heart. And may the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to us words of pardon and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and remain with you and all those you represent, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>